My name is James Finlay. I work for Wells Fargo. I've been working at the bank for about 15 years. And I've been a, an appraisal manager with the bank, uh, managing uh, the appraisals of uh, commercial real estate, uh, all kinds. And uh, I've had a particular focus on sustainable design buildings, LEED certified, Energy Star, Solar PV, and also uh, small commercial property. I'm going to talk today about, uh, well, basically the question is, um, just really about financing options for energy retrofits. And I'm going to address this question from the standpoint of an appraiser who uh, orders appraisals, uh, designs a scope of work, hires an appraiser to do this valuation, and then, uh, you know, the reviewer who looks at the report and writes a memo to the credit underwriters at the bank to consider when they uh, decide about making the loan. When you have a high performance building, which might include energy efficiency or have a certification like LEED or Energy Star, um, the, the appraiser and the bank are really not driving or leading the market. The key thing to remember is that the bank and the appraiser are following the market. So you've got to uh, approach that appraisal process and, and the bank as well as if um, they're buyers. So imagine selling a car and you uh, have a buyer there and you say, yeah, here's my car and I've done some work on it. There it is. Versus a guy who says, here's a great car that I've cherished and this is a book of all the receipts I've had and this is a record of all the miles per gallon and the oil changes I've done. Well, your, your, your perception of that car is going to be different and the same thing applies for uh, high performance buildings. Uh, buildings that are designed to perform well in energy or other resources um, have characteristics about them that need to be explained. Very frequently see uh, owners of these buildings missing that point. Uh, and I ask them for records about their energy use or the details of their solar PV system. And they, they wonder, like, why would I need that? And it's the same reason why um, I would want to know uh, when you change the transmission in your car and how much you pay for it. Um, and so explaining that and getting, getting your head around that. Uh, so the documentation uh, is a key part of showing value in a, in a car sale or in a building sale and in an appraisal. And, and that documentation process is something which is really evolving. The first step to any uh, renovation project is to really get a good understanding of your of your basic asset. You know, have a have a clear understanding of how your building performs, uh, where it might be not performing, uh, where the just literally the door isn't quite closing, the window isn't quite shutting, and to uh, approach that level of efficiency first. And once you sort of clean the filters in your HVAC, your you know heating ventilation system, and make sure all the windows close. And uh, then your building is going to be working, and then you need to look at your cost. Every financial decision about investing in a building is going to rely on uh, what the alternative is to the energy that you're not going to be using, that, and that money saved. So you should know things like what is the average cost per year of your electricity. Most people don't know that. You're not going to, certainly not going to find that on your energy bill uh, from the utility. Uh, but you can calculate that. And, and knowing that number, you will immediately be keyed into what level of efficiency you might have to consider. If you're living in the state of Hawaii and you're paying 35 cents per kilowatt hour for your, your electricity, you have all kinds of options because at that price, you've got a budget to spend uh, on efficiency. And in a, in, in a sense, every month you don't spend it, you're losing money. Uh, if you're in an area where energy is very cheap or uh, maybe hydrogen or uh, hydropower, nuclear, whatever, um, 11, 10, you know, 8, 10 cents, well, frankly, going to be tough maybe to pencil that out. So, so knowing exactly where you start is the only really efficient way to know where you, you're going to go. You know, looking at uh, the timing of logical upgrades to the building. Um, you know, there are moments when, you know, that old furnace has just had it. You know, that air conditioner is just ready to bite the bullet. That fuel, that water pump in your pool is just 
making a racket and you got to change that thing out. So when you start looking at those kinds of decisions, particularly when you look at big fixed installation costs like uh, air handling units, uh, air conditioning, uh, heating, things like that, that's when you really need to step back and say, well, gee, if I upgraded the windows maybe, uh, you know, I could downsize the tonnage of my air conditioner. Or if I change the air handler on my system and made it variable speed, I might be able to modify how much energy is used when the building is not in full occupancy. Um, so that management of, the, uh, of your energy and really knowing uh, what it costs you is, is really, I think, a key part of the, the whole decision process. When you go to get the money, there's really no magic bullet here. I mean, you're gonna pay out of pocket, you're going to get a loan that's based on your credit, who you are. Um, the most difficult loan to get is going to be one where you need to go into a bank and start explaining things like, this is an ASHRAE level two audit that I had performed, and these are the calculations of the energy engineer. And you're, you're going to have a banker who is going to glaze over in five minutes because he's not going to know what you're talking about. And so then, well, let me see. Uh, we'll see if we can get someone at the bank to, to come by and, and help you. Well, what you've started here is an expensive process. So suddenly now what's, what's a, frankly a rel probably a relatively small loan is suddenly become very expensive for the bank to administer, to manage, and to understand, to qualify the risk. Uh, remember that every bank has uh, uh, federal regulators that, that, over, that look over their shoulder and they see a loan roll across and they go like, wow, um, are you sure that you correctly underwrote and made a prudent loan to this, this person? And the bank has to say yes. And if they don't know, they're not going to want to be there when that examiner pulls up that energy efficiency loan and somebody starts wondering what an ASHRAE level two audit is. So you've got to, you've got to be realistic about the, uh, you know, what's driving a bank uh, when it's making these decisions about a loan. And, and frankly, for small loans, a lot of times, you really have to just decide yourself if this loan is gonna make sense or not. Um, certainly things like energy efficiency and saving money might be a completely different calculation than energy generation. So if you're looking at things like putting in a solar system in your house, well, that's energy generation. That's something that you can measure. The sun comes up every day. The warranties are good for 20 years. You can actually negotiate leases where, uh, and I have one of these on my house, uh, where I paid once, 20 year lease, and uh, the output of those panels is guaranteed by the leasing company. They've got a little uh, internet connection up there. There's someone sitting up in a room somewhere and if my solar panels don't perform as, as designed, there's a guy with a ladder out there fixing that thing. So, you know, to me, this is a low risk investment. The sun comes up, I can measure the power. I've got a guy to take care of it. It's good for 20 years. I paid once, I'm done. Versus energy saving that might be oh, I put extra insulation on my house because, you know, last winter, wow, we really paid a lot of money in fuel oil, and this winter, it was really warm. So I didn't use that much fuel oil. So now suddenly all my calculations on, uh, you know, how much money I was going to save and, you know, when that payback was going to be for that system it didn't kind of work out. There are two parts of every energy efficiency upgrade. One is the money that you save during your holding period. Now, if you own a house, maybe five, seven years you're in that house and you move on. If you own, if you're a small business owner, you might be in a, in, in a small commercial building 10, 15 years. You know, you, that location gets branded with you, Bob the shoe guy, Bob the hat guy, you know, Betty the dressmaker, and you want to stay there. So you've got these long holding cycles. And, and so you've got that savings during the holding cycle, but then you also have this value at the end. And appraisers call that the reversion. So there's the value during the process when you hold the building and then the value at sale. And that combined value is really what you need. You can use simple ROI as a benchmark to compare payback, but windows don't wear out. You upgrade your building with windows or insulation or long-lived upgrades, um, those are things that are valuable to the next owner. Two identical buildings, one next door to each other, and this guy spent 50 grand up, uh, upgrading all the windows and doors, and that building is tight as a drum right next door, same identical building but no, nothing invested. Well, you're a buyer, and you're th you know, the quick answer is he spent 50 Gs, this guy spent nothing, 
this guy, this building is worth more. How much more? Okay, that's a discussion you can have. But the point is that y when you think about investing in upgrades, you've got to look at both of those uh, rates of return during the hold holding process and then at the sale. Thank you.